Hi and welcome to Water Animals. Today we're going to be playing with this endoscope. Now the good news is it's not going where you would normally expect it to go. We're actually going to be putting it in the car. And if you look here, it's quite long. It's twisty and I can put this in all sorts of places like James's ear. But we're not going to do that because that's disgusting. Instead we're going to put it in the car. Where would you like to go first, James? Um, it's inside a spark plug. Inside a plug hole. Yeah. Yeah, that's the technical term. Right, let's go inside a spark plug. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start by removing the spark plug so that we can put the endoscope in. So first, we remove the plug lead, then we just loosen the plug a bit before removing it by hand. For those of you who are curious, this engine is actually a 3 litre V8 from a Triumph Stag. It's all original. The engine was last rebuilt some 25 odd years ago, so it'll be interesting to see what it's like inside after all that time. And you can see the end of the plug here. This is the bit that creates the bang. Side. Put it to the end a little bit more. Okay, but you can't because of the clip. Oh, okay. That is at the end of the Well, see what it's like then. I thought it was just looking at the. Oh, yeah, you're looking at the little yeah, mirror. The mirror's working. James, what are you doing? Just from a YouTube taking around. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> so, here we go. Now, first of all, we can see the top of the piston, and you'll notice it's a bit dirty, which is to be expected, as this is where the combustion takes place. And we can also see the walls of the cylinder where the piston moves up and down. And this is also a bit dirty, but actually quite clean compared to some vehicles. So this engine hasn't seen a very hard life since it was last rebuilt. If you notice the arrow at the top of the piston head, then well done. This is actually to indicate the orientation of the piston when it's installed to make sure it's fitted the right way around. Next up, we can see the piston moving up and down as we crank the engine over. You can also see the valves moving in and out. Basically what's happening is as the piston moves up and down, a camshaft is rotating which is moving the valves up and down to allow the air and fuel mixture in as well as letting exhaust gases out. Now if we watch a slowed down version we can see more clearly what's happening. A car engine is typically a four stroke engine and it's called this because there is four strokes of the piston for a complete combustion cycle. Let's take a look at this in more detail. On the first stroke we can see the piston move down and one of the valves open up. This is letting the fuel and air mixture in. On the second stroke, here we see the piston move back up again with both the valves closed. Now this traps the air-fuel mixture in and compresses it. Just before the piston reaches top dead center or TDC, and this is the point where as the piston is as high as it will go, the spark plug creates a spark and this ignites the mixture. As this happens, the piston hits top dead center and then gets forced down by the resulting combustion. On the third stroke, the valves stay closed and the piston moves down. This in turn turns the crankshaft lower down and creates the drive we need to move the vehicle. On the fourth stroke, the piston comes up one final time to push the resulting exhaust gases out of the cylinder. And here you can see one of the valves opening to allow this to happen. Once the piston reaches the top, or TDC, and all exhaust gases have been expelled, the piston comes back down again. The exhaust valve closes and the air fuel valve opens again, thus restarting the cycle. So let's speed it up again. It's worth pointing out this speed is actually just the speed the engine is turned over uh, to get it to start. When the engine is running, this process would happen at a much quicker speed. This is a petrol engine, but a diesel engine works in very much the same way, only rather than using a spark plug to ignite, ignite the air-fuel mixture, we actually use a glow plug instead, which glows white hot to create much higher temperatures. That combined with more compression of the air-fuel mixture is what causes diesel to burn. So, if you've ever wondered what happens inside your engine when you turn the key, now you know. Thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe.